please stand if you're able. Tonight, on this holy night, we come to worship. We join with shepherds, the angels, the wise ones, the poor, with strangers, friends, and family.
may be seated. Welcome to First Congregational United Church of Christ. Welcome to worship on this Christmas Eve as we gather at the manger, as we join together around love incarnate here in our world. As we celebrate our worship this evening, uh, our community extends much beyond these walls as we live stream this service. And so I welcome not only those who are here in this space, all those family, friends, all of the visitors here, but also those who are joining us via live stream. So welcome this evening to our worship. If you are here in this space, we invite you to take a moment during this, these announcements to uh, sign into the red notepads at the ends of those pews, pass those along, and we're glad to know that you are with us tonight. This is a candlelight service, so later in the service we will be singing Silent Night together and passing uh, the candlelight. And as we do that this evening, uh, just a quick note, would uh, invite you to, uh, if you have a lit candle, we would invite you to keep that lit candle vertical. And as you are receiving the light, to tip the unlit candle uh, to, to light your candles as you go down the line. So uh, we will lead you in that uh, candle lighting later in the service. We'll also be receiving an offering this evening, and the, the funds the, that you offer tonight will support the ongoing mission and ministry of First Congregational Church. You can also uh, consider a gift to the Christmas Fund, which helps to support retired United Church of Christ pastors, as well as other lay ministers in the church, or lay workers of the United Church of Christ, as well as those who may be in need of emergency assistance while they are still working. There's a red envelope in your pew, and we invite you to consider a special offering to the Christmas fund tonight. As we receive our offering this evening, you all also received a pink God's Hands card as you came in today. This is in addition to any offerings you might want to offer to the church, and uh, these are ways that you can offer your presence, your prayers, uh, your commitment of faith throughout the week in contributing not only to this community of faith, uh, but also just the way that you live out your faith in your daily life. There's also a place on here for prayer concerns and prayer requests. We receive our offering by bringing that forward to a basket that will be here at the front of the chancel. And uh, we invite you to file around. The movement kind of happens on its own uh, to file forward and, and bring your offerings forward that we offer our lives not only with our hands, but with our feet as we offer that. Um, if you wish to remain seated tonight, you are welcome to do that. There will be ushers moving about and receiving the offering where you're at as well. There are announcements at the end of our bulletin. Beginning on page 9, I invite you to take a look at the, those. You can take the bulletin with you this evening. There, just a reminder that this Sunday worship, there is just one worship service at 10.30 a.m. And our Sunday school will resume on January 10th. And I would invite you also to take a moment and uh, take a look at our prayer concerns and celebrations, and those are listed on page 8. Again, welcome to worship this evening. We will continue by singing Away in a Manger, and as we do that, I invite all of the children to come forward as uh, we, there will be a message from Pastor Elaine here at the front steps. So let us sing, and children, you're welcome to come forward. Good evening. So, you know, there are so many of you, and you're 
all looking so beautiful. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna step right between you. There we go. Wow, you look beautiful. You look wonderful. And it's wonderful to have you here with us tonight. Um, we're going to uh, have just a couple of minutes together, but I want us to think about something that's pretty special on Christmas Eve. Because there is something that we have to remember, and there is one of these things it's a, that it's in, in this church, right up here towards the front. There are a lot of different lights that kind of light the way, give us light in this evening, in, the, in this service. But there's one that's a very special light that we remember helped people in the time when Jesus was born to find Jesus, that it brought a bright light to all of the world around where the people were. So anybody have a guess what that light is? I'm gonna, does anybody know? What do you think it is? A star of Bethlehem, very good, very good. A star of Bethlehem. And in a little while you're going to receive one of these books as a remembrance of this evening. And there is a star of Bethlehem on this, isn't there? Well, that star, that night when Jesus was born, it shone very, the story tells us that it shone very, very bright in the sky. And off in the pasture land, way out where the sheep were, there were shepherds. And then there was another very bright light that appeared. And I'm guessing some of you might know as there were these heavenly beings that came and they said to the shepherds, the Christ child has been born. Go and see him. Do you know what kind of beings these were? If you know, just say it out loud. Angels, that's exactly right. And they had a most brilliant light as well. Light has a very special part of our life, doesn't it? What? We need light to help us be able to, like when, when, when you're at home and the sun goes down, what happens outside? What happens to the outdoors? Is it bright outside when the sun goes down? What happens even, or Addie? It gets dark, doesn't it? It does get dark. And the lights at night, what are the lights that come in the sky at night? Stars, and what else? And the moon. And guess what? Tonight we're going to have, if the, sky, if the clouds clear away, and I want you to watch really closely, there's going to be a great big full moon, a full moon with lots of light that will help us find our way in the darkness tonight too. But on that night, on that night, and I want you to look. Can you turn and see? On that night, there was a brilliant star. The star of Bethlehem, and we remember that. And it helped the shepherds to come and to find the baby. And they were so amazed that guess what happened? That light, that light that they saw, that shone on the baby, they took that light with them. And then guess what they did after that? After they saw that baby and they heard that this was the promised baby coming from God that was going to give the people hope again, what do you think they went and did when they left? They took that light with them and what did they do, Jacob? They told everyone. And that's why we're here tonight because they told everyone and those everyones went and they told more everyones. And eventually, we got to hear the story too. We hear it tonight. And so the light that shone on the baby on that night and it helped them know that something very special happened and they took it with them, we're gonna have that tonight too. Because you now get to be the, lark, the starlight the light that gets to shine, and you get to go tell everybody about it too. And so I have some glitter here tonight. It's just a little bit of spray, and you don't have to have it. 
If you don't want it, if you'd like some on your hand, you can. If you'd like a little spray in your hair. But this is the way, I'm doing it. There we go. Because I want to be part of the light. I want to be part of the story that goes to tell others about this wonderful gift of love that God gave us. So, who's ready? Who's ready? All right, if you want it on your hand or on your hair. All right, turn your hand over. There we go. There you go. Anybody else? There you go. There you go. You want some in your hair? Okay. In your hair? On your hand. There you go. Anybody else? No? Okay. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I know they close their eyes. Would you like it on your hand? None? Okay. Hold it back for her. There you go. There you go. There you go, Sam. All right. Do you want it on your hand? Okay. All right. Who didn't get some that wants some? Okay. And Eva, yes. There you go. You're going to have some. There we go. All right. All right. So I want us to just pause for just a moment. Did everybody get some that wanted some? I think so. Oh, I see sparkles on your face. You have starlight on you. So let's have just a prayer together before you go back to be with your family. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for the light that has come into the world, the light that we have in Jesus Christ. As he came to us in this time, as we remember, as this child that offered us, offered all of the people hope for another day, hope for the next time, hope for a life that can be a promise, a promise um, fulfilled in your love. So be with us and help us be part of that light that we might share that good news everywhere we go. Amen. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful Christmas. took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look. 
The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And a reading from the Gospel of Luke as we continue in our Christmas story. In, the, in those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went there to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger 
because there was no place for them in the inn. Our next reading comes from the Gospel according to Luke from chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And I invite you to join with me in this responsive reading. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger, and when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Are you sure you want to bring a child into this world, given the state of things? Aren't you afraid to bring life into all of this? As a father of two girls, I can say that question is not unfamiliar to me. 
It was a question I heard before our first daughter was born, and it may be a question that lingers for many before they so boldly bring life into the world. Of course, I was scared out of my mind then, and most days, I still am. I have to wonder if God asked the same question. Is it really a good idea to put on flesh and step into this world, given the state of things? Wouldn't it be so much easier to just stay out of it, to keep my distance and not risk getting hurt? But there was this nagging notion, something bigger than just an idea, something that held on tight. Maybe it was a parental instinct. There was something that kept tugging at God. For God so loved the world. It was all about love. It was love that led God to risk everything. And so God decides, let's go for it. God begins by sending angels as messengers to convince the people that this is actually a good idea for God to become a human being. And there seems to be a common confusion. The story just didn't seem to add up for everyone. A young, unwed Mary, Joseph befuddled by how his fiancée got pregnant, a group of animal herders, social misfits who spent more time with sheep than with human beings. This is where God would make a first impression. God had a lot of convincing to do. No, really, Mary, you are blessed among women. Do not be afraid. No, seriously, Joseph, you should stick by Mary. It's not what it looks like. It was the Holy Spirit who got her pregnant. Do not be afraid, shepherds. You spend so much time staring into the starry heavens. We thought you should be the first to know. It's the Messiah. The Savior has been born. Do not be afraid. Fear was that common reaction to Je to God's messengers who carried this news that the gap was narrowing between the divine and the human. And we all know what fear does to us. Fear can make us blind to what is right before our eyes. And the angels reassure us, do not be afraid. Fear can make us act like a bunch of King Herods, afraid to lose the world that we have control over. Fear leads us to put up walls and to put down the ones that we don't understand. And yet again, we are told, do not be afraid. Fear can turn our hearts icy like the winter warlocks. Fear squashes the freedom to care deeply and to love unabashedly. Like Ebenezer Scrooge, who, under the fear of losing the life he had built up, turned cold and uncharitable and unkind toward others. Humbug. Scrooge had built up a protective wall of anger and bitterness, but deep down he was a scared boy. And when he is shaken out of that fear by the revelations of three spirits, he wakes up to, a, to the world on Christmas morning. He wakes up and declares, I am light as a feather. I am happy as an angel. I am as merry as a schoolboy. It is fear that makes us lose our humanity. But at Christmas, all fears are flooded by this reality of God who fully and completely claims this human body as a sacred vessel. God is born with blood in his veins, with tiny fingers and curled up toes, with lungs that breathe in oxygen. Christmas is the moment when God breaks down the superficial distinctions between the sacred and the profane, between holiness and humanity, between sacred story and human story. God steps into this human experience in all its wonder and imperfections and proclaims, it is all worth it. To love and to long for, to endure, to hope, to laugh and to discover joy, it is worth the heartache and the pain, the emptiness and the fulfillment, if only to loosen the grip of fear. 
By showing up in Jesus, God consecrates this body, sanctifies this skin, makes holy every human heart. And so it is that Christmas makes us human again. God is willing to risk it all for love, love for the whole world. God become, becoming human means that God desires for each of us to do the same, to risk becoming a compassionate human being who can bring hope to the world, to risk love, risk joy, risk hope, and do not be afraid. This story of humanity collides with so many other Christmas stories. And here are a few. Risk love and do not be afraid. Like Sam and his father in the movie Love Actually, the young boy from London has found the love of his life. But the problem is she is an exchange student from America. And after Christmas, she is to return home. Like Joseph in our scriptures, Sam might have thought it was better to throw in the towel and move on. With his father's encouragement, he comes up with a plan for her to notice him. He teaches himself the drums so that he could back up her singing at the Christmas program. He's almost ready to give up as she leaves for the airport, but he risks it all for that storybook ending. He risks the heartache, the rejection, the failure, and he goes to the airport determined to declare his love for, you, for her. And in so many words, he says, let's go and get beat up by love. He risks it all. Risk joy and do not be afraid. Like Buddy in the movie Elf, who traveled through the candy cane forest and then through the Lincoln Tunnel. You know the story. He discovers a city of unhappy New Yorkers. He somehow maintains uninhibited joy. He finds wonder in every colorfully lit Christmas tree. He shares Christmas spirit. He meets Jovi, who has a gorgeous voice but is, but is afraid to sing in public. But Buddy reminds her, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. And at the most critical moment, Jovi risks it all to lead the crowd of New Yorkers in cheerful song. And tonight, you can almost hear the, their cheerful voices melding with the choir of heavenly angels proclaiming glory to God in highest heaven. Risk hope and do not be afraid. Like George Bailey in It's a Wonderful Life, that is Jimmy Stewart's character, you may hit a point of despair, afraid of how to go on, wondering if the world had been better off without you. But know that your life reaches beyond anything that you can even imagine. Risk hope for a world transformed by acts of love and gratitude, knowing that every action you take has an impact on those around you. God becoming human means that God desires for us to become fully human too. That's why God risks it all in Christ, so that we would keep our humanity in a world that tries hard to frighten it out of us. As we peer into the manger tonight, may we see God who risks it all for love. Love for you and me and the whole world. Love that redeems us from all that makes us inhuman. This is Emmanuel, God with us. Love incarnate arrives tonight and God risks it all for us so that we might do the same and embody love to the world, to risk love, joy, and hope. May we risk becoming compassionate people, not only at Christmas, but every day of the year. Amen. And let us all say it together. Amen. <laughs>
Please be seated. As we look upon this scene carefully prepared for us, here before us, as we recall the memories of Christmas Eve worship from earlier years, as we receive the story of love in the awareness of a world so in need of peace on earth, and we pause to acknowledge God's reassuring words that we need not be afraid. May the spirit that has brought us here to this place in this moment now quiet our souls and help us offer our prayers in trust and hope of God's love revealed and made new through us as we now join together in a time of prayer. There will be a moment of silence in the center part of our prayer in which you will be able to offer up in silence your own personal petitions, those who you remember this night. So let us pray. Tender, loving God, we gather as a people prepared to hear again the drama-filled story that is a part of our Christmas journey. We thank you for the hope that it inspires in the hearts of all who face challenge and struggle. We thank you for this time of wonder, awe, and contemplation. We thank you for drawing us into the mystery of your love. We thank you for the light of your promises fulfilled that lead us still, joining heaven and earth. On this holy night, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for all nations and their rulers, for anyone with power over the lives of others. Grant reconciliation to those surrounded with conflict and violence, that they may live in peace. We pray for those who defend the helpless, for those who strive for justice, for those who make room to find a way to peace for all the world and all who live in it. Bless all who are entrusted with sharing your word that it might be proclaimed with truth and courage. We pray for our own community, for friends, neighbors, and family, near and far. We pray for anyone suffering, sick, alone, afraid, or in any kind of trouble, and for those who have died. We pray especially for each one remembered in this moment of silence. Help us, God. Help us to have ears that hear and eyes that see so that we too might find and follow your light that guides us to the Christ who continues to show us the way into Christmas peace. Surprise us with a new word. Encircle us with your gentle touch. Nudge us in the direction that takes us straight into the arms of a love that shares the laughter and the tears together with all your people. Grace us with a compelling spirit to go forth in joy, treasuring the words of sacred story and sharing Christ's love with a world that longs to receive good news. We ask that you hear our prayers as we now join together in the prayer Jesus taught us when we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
Amen. The love of God is born new in the world as often as we embody that love in the works of compassion, peace, and justice. You are invited, as you are able, to come forward and bring your offerings, your envelopes, perhaps your Christmas fund contribution, your God's hand cards that offer ways in which you present yourself in service. All of these you can bring forward and place in the basket that will be here in front of the altar. An usher will come to each one of you who may remain, may choose to remain seated. So let us in this evening, this evening as we recognize all the love that has been shared with us, that we may now offer our gifts in a spirit of generosity and hope.
Gospel of John from chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth.
God is here, Christ is born among us. What joy is found in this holy child, light and life for all people. Let us adore him with our hearts and with our whole lives. Let us go in peace and with all, bearing the Spirit of God.